Good evening, everyone. It's time to get back in God's Word just a few minutes to see what He has to tell us today. And it's always a great joy to come to you this way and share the Gospel, share the Lord's Word, and rejoice together knowing we have such a wonderful Savior and how that we need to be obedient to Him and give Him all the praise and glory. Today we're going to be studying and reading from the 16th chapter of St. Matthew in the King James Version Bible. And if you have your Bible, turn along, turn there with me and read along with me. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you, Lord, to thank you and praise you and give you all the glory and honor for another opportunity to get in your word just a little while. I pray you anoint these lips of clay and give us wisdom and knowledge to explain your word to others' understanding that will draw us all closer to you and give us a greater desire to follow you and be obedient to your call. And Lord, I pray, Lord, you pour out your spirit today on every listener. Let them know that you are, that they are in your hands. And Lord, help, it, help us all grow in the faith and knowledge of the greatness that you are and how much you loved us. We won't forget to give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, we do pray and ask. Amen. And thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy. 16th chapter of St. Matthew. And this comes under the Peter's confession of faith. The Pharisee also with the Sadducees came and tempting, tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he would already showed them many things, but here again they are asking for a sign. People are looking for signs of day. When the Lord has already given all kinds of signs that he is the Son of Man, he is the Lord Jesus, and he's the one that saves. And if we get to heaven, we got to th go through him and by him. And he is the one and only way there is to heaven. Two, he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. Three, and in the morning, it will be Foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Now listen what it says. O oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but cannot discern the signs of the time. You can see all these things from the sky and and understand kind of what the weather is going to be. But you can't see the times around us or around you that speaks of my coming, my return, and what we must do in order to inherit eternal life. A wicked and adulterous generation Seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left them and departed. In other words, he was saying, You have already seen, you have already seen the miracles, you have already seen what had happened. In other words, through the loaves and through the fishes. You've already all saw all this. And you still don't believe. And he left them and departed. He left them in order from the makeup of their mind. Whether they're going to receive him. Or receive something else. 
5. And when his disciples came, were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Now listen to what he begins to say again. 6. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware. of the leaven, of the Pharisees, and of the Sadducees. You beware of what they teach and what they claim. The Lord, he said, be, beware, be mindful of them. Seven, and they reasoned among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread. Now this is show you a sign of men of people that doubt, then they'll be questioning God. They'll be questioning us about God and our salvation. That's why we always need to have an answer when they question us about our salvation, that we can say to them we have salvation through and by the Lord Jesus Christ, and by Him only we will make it to heaven. Verse 8, When which when Jesus perceived. See, he already knew what they were thinking in their mind and what they are saying. Therefore, again, we cannot slip nothing on God or hide nothing from him. He already knows our thoughts and intents of the heart. He said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. Now he was talking this to his disciples. Because they had forgotten to take bread. They were a disciple and, for, and forgot. Don't let nobody ever kid you today that we cannot forget some of God's blessings he's poured out on us. That's why we need to remind ourselves every day of God's blessings and thank Him and praise Him for all the blessings He has blessed us with. 9. Do you not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets ye took up? Ten, neither the seven loaves of the flour of the four thousand and how many baskets took ye up? Have ye already forgotten all these things? When they were there with it, they saw it. They knew what had happened, they knew what had took taken place. They knew that Lord Jesus had blessed the food. And when he blessed the food, it also increased the amount of food there was. 11. How is it that you do not understand that I speak it not to you, to you concerning bread? I mean the bread, physical, uh, the physical bread. He's speaking of the spiritual bread now. That you should beware of the living, living of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Again, be careful, be aware of what they teach you. Because they're telling you things contrary to my gospel, to Jesus' gospel. And it's still done all across the country in lands a day. In number one place that they do it in God's, in the church house where people are gathered together to give him praise and glory and honor and worship him in spirit and truth about and telling others about Jesus and his love and the great price that he paid on Calvary that we could be saved. Twelve. Then understand they how that he had he made them not not to not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. He took all that for them to open their eyes 
that he was telling them to not be partakers of the Pharisees and Sadducees' teachings. That would teach them wrong and lead them away from the truth of the gospel that he is and was their Savior and he is our Savior. 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do you do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? See, over and over, he told them who he was. Even in this verse of Scripture, he told them again who he was. 14. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, which would have been Elijah, and others Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. But now what he, listen what he asked them. 15. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? See, he had already told them different times. But again he asked them. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's a great answer. Peter couldn't have given him a better or greater answer than this. But we still find out later that the same Peter Denied him three times before the rooster crowed. But also we'll find that he had to tell Jesus he loved him three times. 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Other word, my Father has told you, revealed to you who I am. He also testified us to us today that who Jesus is, that Holy Spirit, or that Holy Ghost power that comes, that He pours out on us, will tell us who Jesus is, that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 18, And I say unto you, also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now look at these few little words right here. He wasn't calling Peter the rock like some say he did. But now I'm going to read this again, and I'm going to linger on upon four words. These four words will tell us about the rock. And I said unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock. He was referring to himself as being this rock. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it if we don't build up on the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our house will not stand spiritually. Our spiritual house that's supposed to be founded upon the rock, the true foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it's not truly founded upon him, then it will fall. And if it's not on him, it's on the sinking sand. And it will sink down into the sand. But the foundation of God standeth sure and will never perish. And he said, now, And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
This is what we need to be looking to today. Making sure we forgive those that hurt us and say things against us. That we may be forgiven and set free from that. Because if we don't forgive, we will not be set free from that. 20. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. He told them that knowing that they would. And when they told others that he was the Christ, was the Christ they would bring more to him because they would follow him, follow the disciples to him. Want to hear what he had to say and to see who he was. 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go in unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief, and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. He was telling them here how he would die and how that he would raise again, victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and he did it on that resurrection morning, and if he hadn't arose over death, hell, and the grave, he'd have still been there, and he could not have been our Savior, but he did, and he is our Savior today, and for everyone that will come to him and be saved. He is our great Redeemer, and we'll take us home to glory one day if we're saved and if we'll follow him. 22. Now listen, what Peter so quickly done. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. See how quickly people, uh, Peter changed his opinion. Just a few verses before, he declared that he was the Son of God. Now, he said he was telling Jesus. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. 23, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Don't tell, don't let nobody ever tell you that Satan can't wiggle his way in to our hearts and our, our lives and get us to say something or do something we should have never said in the first place. And when we said it and say it, we can't take it back. All we can do is pray to God and ask God to forgive us for that. Because the words have already gone out. 'He said, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. He was a thinking of the spirit. He let the, he's letting the thoughts of the world come into him and push out his faith in God, his trust in God and not. He said, For thou savorest not the things that be of God. You don't look to the things of God. You don't look to the Holy Spirit that I've already revealed to you, but those that be of men. Now listen, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Today, people don't want to hear the words that we must take up our cross daily and follow Him. But let me tell you, my friend, if we don't take up that cross daily and follow Him, we cannot be His disciples. If we can't be His disciples, we, then we can't be saved because we must be saved in order to be a disciple.
25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. In other words, if you go away from me, keep trying to keep from having to suffer for the wages of sin, you will lose. If you don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ in his way, you will lose your salvation because you won't receive it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. He that leaveth the world and worldly ways and hang on to him as their own personal Savior, free, saved, front, saved, and washed in his blood. Then we will find it, find that eternal life he told us about and how we could receive it. But now listen, these very these next few verses of scripture, it tells us how much greater is the word of God in his love, his mercy than forget and forgiveness than everything. Twenty six far, what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall re reward every man according to his work. How many is going to get the good reward? Or how many going, going to get here the word said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. It's going to happen one day. Although we can't number them, we can't tell you, we can't tell who they are, but God knows everyone. So let us labor for the Lord. Make sure our name is written in the Lounge Book of Life. And as Peter had always said in his writing, be diligent to make her calling and election sure. Know that we have been redeemed and saved by the grace of God. Not just let man tell us that we are. 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Some say today that everybody will be gone from this earth, from this earth when He comes back. Some say all the Christians will be gone from this earth when He comes back. That's not what His Word says. But He did say we'd be called up to meet Him in the air. Those that are ready to meet Him We'll meet him in the air. That air is the Holy Spirit, the great Spirit of God, because flesh and blood cannot look upon his face. Therefore, we got to meet him in the Spirit, or we could not look upon him to recognize who he was. So, my friends, it's better to look to the Lord and his way and his righteousness than to own all the world and everything that's in it and all the riches it holds. Because I tell you, my friend, all these riches cannot compare to the one moment in glory land in that sweet heaven of rest that he went to prepare for us a long time ago when he ascended back to the Father to take his seat at the right hand of the Father to make intercessions for you and I. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's given we thank you again, Lord, for your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for these scriptures you've given us this evening. And Lord, we follow your spirit, Lord. If we preach the same message over and over, Lord, we follow your spirit. Because there's always somebody needs to hear it. Maybe one more time they need to hear it. But, Lord, your word will not return void to where you send it. And I pray, O oh Lord, you bless every listener. Pour out your spirit upon them. 
Let them know they've been secured. They're sealed to the, with the Holy Spirit of promise. And they are, they are in your hands, Lord. And draw us all closer to you. Lord, I pray for those that's lost and don't know you as their Savior, Lord. I pray they'll be saved. And I pray someone will be saved today. And that, Lord, you will send your drawing spirit to them and give them an opportunity to those that have said no before. But, Lord, I pray today, Lord, for those that are sick and afflicted in body and in pain, Lord, I pray you reach down, heal, deliver, and set free. I know you can, Lord, if it be your will. And it's not your will for any that would perish. But, Lord, I pray, Lord, today that you'll give them strength and courage to go on. And, Lord, I pray for those that you call today. And, Lord, when you call us away, Lord, that we can bow our head and give you the praise and honor and glory that we're not able to give today because we're still in the flesh. But then, Lord, when we get home to be with you, we will be in the Spirit as you are, and we can bow our heads and step aside, Lord, and give you the praise and honor and glory that you deserve that we're not able to give today because we're still in the flesh. These things we ask in the name of the wonderful Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we thank you again, Lord, Father, for your love and your great mercy.